Yo, what's up guys? Party Waffles here. So for the last video, I posted a Frost Solo Shuffle 6.0 video. And in the comments, I said, if you guys want to see me do a VOD review of one of my Frost games and break down and explain everything I'm doing like I did with the previous Unholy video, uh, 100 likes and we would do it. Well, we got the 100 likes fast, so it seems there is a demand for it. So right now, I'm going to break down a 6-0 Frost Solo Shuffle, the last game you saw. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing. It's a pretty tough lobby, so it should give you guys some good insight. And uh, yeah, you can basically just replicate this. It's going to be the same kind of gameplay into casters, but I figured I'd show you a tough physical lobby. So uh, let's get right into this here. So let's turn this down a little bit. Basic. Uh, so I'm going to show you the spec here really quick. Should show it any second here. But this is... Um, just a typical like okay well there was the there's the build so this is just a typical two-handed fallen crusader build so we're going to basically just play this like we always did right we're doing one minute goes i have the on use trinket so i'm basically just getting grip blind stun one shot typical like the same as my guides for like the last three years of frost okay same play style so let's get right into it i'll turn a little bit of sound on all right so we're going in here right now so off the rip i'm going to give you guys my insight on what i'm thinking so i Probably I'm going to go on the hunter. Like there's a chance I just go warrior and priest and grip them together and do the go with them. Or I might go hunter and try and get a triple to blind the hunter and the warrior and the priest. Because the only way I'm going to be able to get three people in the blind is if I go on the hunter. Because the priest potentially takes two, gri two grips himself. So we'll see how this plays out though. Okay, I guess I, so I opted to do it a different way. I opted to run at the priest to get the triple, right? Because if I run at the priest, the warrior's hitting me, so he's on top of me, which means I can grip the hunter in and I'll have three people uh, stacked naturally, right? So that's the big part of Frost is the setups. But I opt, I decided the hunter didn't matter that much and I just went for it. So you don't always need a triple or anything like that, right? But so what's happening right now is I'm basically, I blind this guy, uh, I pop my AMS so I can not get feared and everything like that, pop my stuns, and then I'm going to basically drag in here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to drag and stun into remorseless stun into silence. So let's see. We're going on the priest. Priests are a good kill target. So, and we're going to silence him out. He PS'd. So the reason I swapped there was because the priest pressed his pain sep, uh, pain suppression on himself. So if someone uses a defensive cooldown, I'll generally swap to the next person to get more cooldowns. Because the more cooldown, you basically want to chip away all their cooldowns as frost. The more cooldowns you get, it's like you just win the game, right? So we'll see. So right now we got warrior cooldown, we got warrior trinket, we got warrior wall, we got priest uh, pain step. But yeah, so now I'm basically in the in-between phase right now. So what I'm going to do now is just try to live and try to uh, maintain. I'm playing death strike wall, so every time I death strike I'm going to wall. But basically, so I have my one minute go with Pillar of Frost, and then every 30 seconds, I have a Remorseless Winter Go. So you'll see what's going to happen here, right? I'm basically just living, and I'm setting up for my Remorseless Winter Go, essentially. But I'm hitting the Hunter in between the go, just so that I can have maximum cleave damage. So I have a mini go right now. It's going to be super instrumental that you press these mini goes on cooldown. If you don't press this on cooldown, it's, it's going to make you delay your next go, right? Because they perfectly line up. So if I wait five seconds, I have to wait an extra five seconds to do my next pillar of frost go, which you don't want. So it's basically off cooldown. I got these people set up and I'm going to be looking to stun everybody right now. Uh, again, I gripped the priest in, right? So the, the mini go is basically just a bait go. I gripped the priest, got his fade there, and I'm basically just trying to bait whatever I can from whoever. It's the master bait go. So... We baited the priest fade there, nothing too crazy, but sometimes the wall, sometimes they'll trinket, whatever. So again, there's our mini go. Now we're gonna have our real go pretty soon here. In about 10 seconds, we're gonna be doing our real go. Yep, so here we go, we're looking for it. The He he put him on the, uh, so I have my game winning go in four seconds here, right? And my paladin just hodged the healer and put him on stun DR right before I have my game winning stun combo. So, that was a little unfortunate, but uh, we'll see how we play around it, right? That's the thing about Solo Shuffle, right? You could let that tilt you and just throw you off completely, or you can just play around what happened. That's what you need to do. So even though it happened, I still get the tripled line there. Even though he's DR'd, I'm still going for the, right? So I'm going to do the stun one shot right now. I'm going to kill the warrior here, okay? Reason I'm killing the warrior, he has no trinket. He has no wall. The priest has one PS, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, I'm just cleaving them too. The hunter doesn't matter as much in the go, right? My main kill target here is the warrior and the priest. So anyways, we got basically every single cooldown, right? The priest has nothing but dome left. The warrior has nothing. As soon as he PSs that guy, I just tab the hunter again. I'm trying to just chip away and get as many cooldowns as I physically can. Not only that, but I'm trying to keep my death strike wall up as I just said there, right? Because I'm face tanking a hunter and a, a fury warrior. So I really need 
I need that death strike wall in between the goes or I'm just going to drop like a rock. So here we go. We're going to have another go here in a second. Uh, ultimate, he gets the ultimate penance off. We have our 30 second go right here. So I'm just stunning out. We're just notice how they're just shrinking stuff on the 30 second go. We're guaranteed going to win on the other one. Because the, the big go is coming up, right? With the dragon and everything is coming up. And the horseman and everything like that. So I'm not playing breath in this game either. But breath is also decent. But more so in threes. But So this is basically when you know you win as a DK. As a frost DK, right? So they have nothing. I mean, he's going to have his wall back. So that's why, that's why I just said we have to kill the priest, right? So 18 seconds, 15 seconds until my go. But the warrior will have his wall back but the priest will have nothing so the priest can just die because he has nothing and he has no trinket okay so you're just playing based on current defensive cooldowns that are in the game like the warriors you'll see the warrior has wall back i even typed my teammates priest dies 15 because this is a guaranteed win right here so we really need to make sure that we play this part clean because this is the game winning go so the priest is going to get gripped in here he fades the blind of course because he's a priest and it doesn't actually matter. I send the dragon stun and we're just going to start going. See, sometimes the goes are going to get a little a little scuffed, right? If they fade or something like that. That's where you got to finesse it. Like how I just turned around and I just shot the dragon and connected solo and dragged the melee on. But he dies here. So by no means was that an easy, uh, easy win or anything like that. But so there's one. So notable things. Main go, one minute go. 30 second go you got to do those both as fast as possible hitting the correct target that doesn't have the defensives that you know will die and then keep the blood forged up the entire game to live in between while kiting all right let's go to the next round i want i want to see if there's any like fat one shots in the opener but this was a tough one to kill in the opener okay so right here that what's happening basically is they're just trying to avoid my go right like they know that i want them stacked so the pally's trying to just go into africa while the warrior goes to another person so i can't get a double or anything but we'll see what happens. What do I do about this situation? Looks like I get the triple right here. Monk ports it. Not a big deal. Pop the remorseless winner. Pop the remorseless winner and start ramping, right? So right here, if you don't know what you're doing as Frost or you're new, you might uh, lose it right here, right? I grip in for the blind. Let's just watch that back. We grip into the blind and the monk ports the blind, okay? The monk ports it, okay? Which is expected because they can do that. So... Don't panic here, right? We're just gonna play, start the remorseless winner, and then we can still get the monk in the go by just grip dragoning him because we have an instant stun. So I'm gonna start the remorseless winner. I'm gonna start ramping, and then you'll see what happens. Start the remorseless winner on the pally. I grip the monk into a dragon stun. He ports it again. Is what it is. We just start cranking, right? Like everything's not always gonna go according to script, but even though the go was scuffed a little bit, we still get the revival. We get warrior trinket, right? It doesn't have to be a perfectly clean cut go like you see in threes. As long as you're just pumping damage, right? Okay. All right, there we just... So, we got a lot of cooldowns there. We got Warrior Wall. We got Cocoon. We got a lot. So, again, next go, the Warrior could potentially die. Um, we're going to have our 30-second go coming up here in a minute, though. Three seconds until our 30-second go, okay? One thing here, uh, pressing zone would be really good here, right? Just trading zone one-to-one -one for the Pally Wings is really good. Sometimes when I'm Frost, I get thrown off because I'm in the middle of my go and I won't do it, but uh probably be good to throw it here i might just press the remorse and then throw it we'll see though he empties the bubble there that's really good i throw the remorseless winner the warrior might just die here in between the go uh he, okay so there it is and the warrior see that chat people say frosty kick can only kill in the go wrong that was not during any of my damage that was literally just a mini remorseless winner go and the guy died right so had he not died there in 20 seconds we have a guaranteed win still with our huge damage so that's what it comes like th that's what it comes down to with frostlight it's like when the go goes wrong in solo shuffle you just gotta still get the damage out as long as you get the damage out and you it's okay and you're doing your goes like on 30 seconds instantly the second 30 seconds up it's not bad all right let's go next so right here uh this is actually like a really hard counter for frosty k we're fighting cupid cleave with a misweaver misweavers are like the hardest counter for them in particular um so this is a really hard round let's see how it plays out I, in the chat, I say everyone can die, right? Because it all just depends who presses what on who's going to die. Anyone's a kill target potentially. But let's see what, how it plays out here. One thing you can do about against monks to kind of cheese them as frost, not so much with a pally, but if you run at the monk on his port, grip the guy on top of the monk, blind them both on the monk's port, and then stun the monk and silence over the sun so he can't revival, uh, you can cheese them like that, especially if you're playing Breath Deathbringer. But the thing about it is he has a pally, he's just going to sank it, so... 
So I, w I just said, I want to go on the hunter and get a triple, right? So I'm trying to set naturally set up a triple as much as I physically can. But unfortunately, uh, I don't know what just happened there. They just got like knocked away or something and feared into a root. So something just went awry there and you can tell it's okay. So I have the go right now, the warrior shockwaves, which is already over by the time I can even barely do anything, which is unfortunate. I would much rather let him let me stun, but it doesn't matter. We go with what we have, right? So we're just going to be pumping here. I'm cleaving everybody. I'm going to be hitting everybody, swapping on defensives if someone presses one and just trying to basically maximize damage and pull as many defensive cooldowns out of their arsenal. That sounded weird to say, but um, yeah. So, and that's what we did, right? We did, we did our opener go there. We got the Pally's bubble. We got revival. We got hunter wall. Uh, we got a nice bunch of cooldowns there. So mini go here. Notice this chat, okay? I press Remorseless Winner three seconds or four seconds too late. So notice now I'm going to have to wait an extra couple seconds for my next go. So that's what you want to avoid. You really want to press it on cooldown. Um, so we're going right now. I'm going to try and pull out some cooldowns from the enemy team if I can. Maybe I can get a Sank from the Paladin or something. But like, again, the Remorseless isn't always going to be perfect because you have to just send it. So Anyways, we're just softening them up right now, right? Basically just killing time between the next go. So I have the next go in about, uh, well, we're at, my remorseless is a little off sync, right? So I already have pillar, but I might have to send this right. There we go. See, so that was good that he shockwaved. I had to send the blind there three seconds before the go was ready, right? Which if I had pressed it on cooldown, it would have already been ready. Uh, so see how that adds up, right? Anyways, we do the go there. We get the cocoon. We swap to the next guy, right? Same thing. Get a CD, swap to the next guy, get a CD, or sometimes kill through, depending. But we're just chipping through CDs until you know the win condition is there. That's the thing about Frost, right? You kind of have to be the shot caller and like uh, understand how to play off the enemy cooldowns because Frost is all about choosing who... Like you have to see, okay, this guy doesn't have this, this, and this, and this guy doesn't have this, this, trinket. Like this guy is guaranteed dead and you have to attack the right person. That's the skill cap of Frost, I would say, is like being able to understand and read cooldowns and tell who you need to actually hit when. Because at the basic at, at the basic level, just doing a go every 30 seconds is like pretty straightforward, right? So let's see here. We have a mini go in 10 seconds here and then a real go in 30 seconds. Let's see what's happening. Again, I'm just trying to live in between the goes, right? Like I'm trying to kite the pets and kite the rat pally and everything as much as I can while keeping my death strike wall up. Okay, so I just do a mini go there. So one thing, a choice that I had to make there was I used my uh, dragon stun, okay, which is my big burst that summons my horseman. It gives a and d I don't generally want to use that on a 30 second go like that, right? But I didn't use it because I wanted to. Uh, I used it out of necessity. We were all about to die. So I used it just to give us a couple seconds and then I can remorse this winter stun out just to slow down the pace of the game and maybe get my priest to get pressed dome or something. So it was basically just to slow down the pace of the game. But we ended up getting bubble with it. Because the thing, thing about it is if I use that there, then I don't have it for the real pillar go in 20 seconds, which could cost us, but I still have Remorseless anyways, so. Okay, so the Pally is no bubble. So the Pally can die next go, or basically anybody but the Hunter can die next go. But again, I'm just, just kiting right now. I'm just delaying. Do whatever you can in between the go to delay to get to it. We're about to win in a few seconds. We grip this guy into a blind, trinket, kill the Pally, boom, dead. No, one million, one million damage right there. Okay, guys, we'll and we'll we'll just fast forward to the last round because it's kind of like the same same deal. But again, and if you're fighting casters, it's like you don't have to get a triple, right? You just do a double and just do it the best you can and try to maximize damage. It's not about doing it perfectly; it's about maximizing damage, even if it goes wrong. So let's take a look at the uh, final round here. All right, let's look at the final round. So we're fighting Ret DK as. Uh, frost fighting ret dk as frost let's do this so i'm sure by now you guys know what's going to happen i just said let's go fury and ret right so i'm going to go in here i'm going to try to get a triple they're going to try to avoid it you guys know how this goes by now right the cat and mouse game they avoid it i get it i i uh try to get a triple here he fades eventually and then we get the triple right so the priest faded, 
he faded the grip and blah 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 but and they also faded the uh well they didn't fade the blind but anyways so you see what happened there let's just watch that back one more time right like they got freedom they're trying to like avoid my go the priest the priest things he doesn't get in it he fades and then it's looking like oh no we might not get it right wrong we grip we send the dragon and we instantaneously get it so it, that's what it's all about finish him off but yeah like there's there literally isn't more to it than this that's it that's literally it just do big damage uh do big damage on both your 30 second goes and then try to pump in between slash live to the next one if you need to run away uh run away if you don't don't but right now we got warrior wall priest trinket basically the priest or the warrior could die in the next go possibly they have no swap we could silence over the priest in the next go so that he can't uh, ps himself but we'll see what happens We'll see what happens here. Again, I'm just keeping my blood forge up, right? See, if you notice in the top, you'll notice in the top, like when I press death strike, my blood forge, trying to keep that up as much as possible. Like the death strike wall, how it works is when you death strike, you get a damage reduction. So you want to use that damage reduction when you're high HP. You don't want to wait until you're low HP and then press it. You want to try to use it when you're high and negate the damage before it happens. So we're going to grip this guy in here to a, uh, I can't grip him because of ultimate pen. We get bubble before the grip. So after this ultimate pen in the bubble, these guys are very, I'm pretty sure they're dead. There's just no way, right? There's just no way. I could go for a triple, but I think I'm just going to get the double. Oh, I, come on, triple, triple, party grip. I'm just trying to live here for a second. I'm kind of like dying. Okay, I had to try to live for a second there. But I think they're dead right here, though. I think they're dead. Anyways, we do the go. See, the pally wasn't in the go there, so he sank. He just sank the guy out of it, but... I kind of that wasn't like a go that I wanted to send like that. I wanted to like do it clean, but uh, I out of necessity I couldn't. But looking back, I should have just triple blinded. I was like ten percent HP, and I kind of like death strike instead, so I didn't die. But I think if I just triple blinded, none of them had trinket, so I probably would have been okay, and it would have been a cleaner go. So looking back in hindsight, that's probably what I would have would have done there. But I wanted to get the death strike wall up. Anyways, we go for the dragon there for the thirty second go again, just because uh, they they're pretty far behind, right? Like they don't have wall, they don't have bubble they have like nothing so i'm kind of just trying to kill them with consistent damage at this point because we have killed them with consistent damage one round this lobby so again keeping your dot up on the healer is also pretty nice just for extra damage but and just like this they're they're gonna die here i'm pretty sure they go down the pally can go down anybody goes down and that's it boys there it is that is how you play frost uh dual wield is a little bit different dual wield's just a little bit different it's a little bit more consistent damage style but that's basically it, right? Go in, do your goes, try to live in between the goes, get to the next go, and then just kill people that don't have cooldowns. You don't have, really have a set target. You just need to kind of adapt to who presses what with the game. But yeah, if this video helps you guys out in green rating and frost, drop a like down below. Maybe drop a comment, say what's up. But if you guys got any video requests or anything like that, let me know. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and take care. Peace.